Hello there. Today I'm going to make a syrup cake. Now this cake is made in Louisiana from syrup. You can use any 100% cane syrup, but most of the time in Louisiana, it's going to be made with Steen's cane syrup, which is made in Abbeville, Louisiana. So let's get started on Darlene's table. All right, I'm starting with one and a half cups of Steen's 100% cane syrup. And a half a cup of vegetable oil. Add one egg. Now I'm going to whisk this until it is blended well. Now this is the flour that also has cinnamon, ginger, and cloves. I sifted this flour with the seasonings. So I'm going to alternate between, I've got a three quarter cup of hot water with a one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. I'm going to alternate between the flour and adding the baking soda mixture. Between it, each Addition, I'm going to blend well. Now the baking soda and water addition. The baking soda will give us a light, airy cake. All right, more flour. Continue that until it's all been incorporated into the syrup mixture. Well, this is the last of the flour. You'll start and end with the flour. I have prepared a 10 inch round cake pan. I used Crisco and flour, and then I put a piece of parchment paper in the bottom. You will need a pan this size. It filled this pan up. This is a large layer. Into the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 minutes. You can test it with a toothpick before you take it out. I uh, needed a few more minutes, it looks like. And now the toothpick's clean, it's ready. So I will let it sit for 15 minutes on the cooling rack before I turn it out onto the cooling rack to completely cool. After 15 minutes, I'm gonna pull off the parchment and we'll let this cool completely. Just a little mishap there, but it went back in. Okay, I'm going to let this cool completely. And now I'm gonna sift the powdered sugar, beat the butter until it's light and fluffy, add the powdered sugar a little at a time, this is a good frosting, and it will use uh, steam syrup in it as well. So we'll beat this a little at a time. One thing I found when I was finished with this is it was pretty stiff. Well, I went ahead and used it, but I have changed the recipe to reflect the addition of heavy cream to the icing. So keep adding the powdered sugar. Now a quarter cup of steamed syrup, the same as I used in the cake, along with two teaspoons of vanilla and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. So let's blend this again until it's light and fluffy. We'll scrape down the sides. And blend some more. Okay, like I said, it was a little bit 
difficult to spread and the next time if it's like this I will definitely add I'll start with probably one tablespoon of heavy cream or even half a tablespoon and get it to a, a little bit better consistency plus you'll be able to make it look prettier now to ice the cake I was able to spread it but it wasn't the easiest thing in the world so I would definitely add at least one tablespoon and you're just gonna have to judge it yourself depends on the humidity depends on a lot of things when I first read this recipe I was thinking to myself wow that's a lot of syrup in this cake and the icing but somebody knew what they were doing because this cake is delicious. Now some recipes have syrup drizzled over the top of the icing and I thought that that was just a bit over the top. Pardon the pun, so I chose not to do that, but you can should you desire. The cane syrup lends deep notes of caramel and butterscotch and the cinnamon, ginger, and cloves pair wonderfully with the syrup. It has a wonderful texture and the taste reminds me somewhat of gingerbread, but not exactly. I decorated it with Mardi Gras sprinkles to serve for Mardi Gras. So you know where to find this recipe by now. Just go to darlingstable.com and there you will find other desserts and printable recipes for each one. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please give us a like and consider subscribing. That way you can keep up with what is going on right here on Darlene's Table.